to you. Hello. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. I welcome you to our session, uh, Advances in Materials. And we have two hours and with a very tight uh, schedule, only 15 minutes per presentation into the discussion. So I ask all the speakers to keep in time. My name is Manuel Kuna. I am professor for solid mechanics at Freiburg University in Germany. So not to waste time, I announced the first presentation by the Mero group about crash testing on the carbon fiber reinforced plastic aircraft subcargo fuselage section. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, as the chairman said, my presentation is about the crash test of a subcargo structure of a carbon composite commercial aircraft. So, I am David Delsa, I am from Onera. Onera is a French aerospace research center, and I personally come from a department that works on the crash and impact resistance of aircrafts. So, this presentation and the paper were prepared with the help of uh, my colleague Gérald Portomi from Onera and uh, with Matthias Weimer from DLR. So, these works were performed within a technological platform which was coordinated by Hervé Germany. And the uh, overall objective of the project were to design, to numerically simulate, and finally to test uh, carbon composite subcarbon structure with innovative crash worthy properties. So we were three partners involved in the project. Airbus Germany, uh, that was responsible for the design and manufacturing of the demonstrator. DLA, which is a German aerospace center, uh, was in charge of the numerical analysis. And Onera was responsible for the, for the crash test. So regarding the crash test, the main objective was to define a protocol that would permit to uh, submit the structure to uh, realistic loading conditions, which means loading conditions that would actually be supported by the structure in case of real crash condition. So here in this slide in the following, I give you in fact a counter example of a testing protocol that would be very simplified because uh, the structure was a full section. It was uh, done within a European program called CRASSER that ended in 2000 and one objective of this uh, project was to test a full scale fuselage section of a carbon composite commercial aircraft, aircraft. So this section was made of the passenger area, the cargo area, and the subcargo area in which the energy absorption components were implemented. It was sine wave beams, here and here. So two sine wave beams. By design, this structure, uh, the subcargo area was expected to absorb the totality of the crash energy. And then, as it, was, as it was a full section, there was no need for a specific load introduction system. The consequence is that the structure could be tested in a free fall condition with very simple guiding conditions. Only cables. In our situation, uh, this kind of very simple testing is not applicable because we have a partial substructure and we need to take into account specific load conditions at both edges of the structure. So this is the plan of my presentation. I will first talk about the Supergo demonstrator, which is based on the ICU concept. ICU is for integrated cargo units. Then the second step will be dedicated to the identification of the loading conditions, which was done by DLR, then the crash test, and finally the conclusion. So the ICU that you can see here, which is located in the lower part of the structure, is an integrated cargo unit, is a highly integrated component, which basically fulfills two main functions, the lower shell frame and the cross beam functions. So besides these two major functions, uh, the ICU can also be used within the crash worthy concept because we can implement energy absorption component settings. So the manufacturing of the demonstrator was done by CTC, Composite Center Technology, which is an Airbus company. So here on this slide you have the different phases of the manufacturing. 
from the preforming of the plate to the infusion, and then the final product, which was more or less two meter, two meter long. The demonstrator was composed of two ICUs for the global dimension that you have here, one was two meter and one two meter by one meter. Four uh, energy absorption components, two by ICUs. These uh, components uh, are called trigger tube segments, TTS, and they in fact more or less, so here, one here, one here for one ICU and the same for the other ICU, and they more or less uh, correspond to half tubes which are related to their ICU. Uh, the demonstrator also had uh, carbon steel, stiffened with stringers, and finally, two cargo floor beams made of aluminium. So the second step of the project uh, was related to the identification of the abatic condition. It was done by DR with the abacus code uh, through the simulation of a kinematic model. This model was made of two fuselage frames with their ICUs. The material modeling was very simple, purely uh, linear elastic. The modeling of the TTS components uh, was also very simple. It made use of macro elements whose characteristic could be modified according to the scenario we wanted to investigate, and it was simulated in vertical drop at 22 feet per second. So there were three objectives, in fact three objective, objectives to this kinematic modeling approach. Uh, I will only, only talk about the third one, but just to mention, the first objective, sorry, the first objective was to design the frame, <coughs> through the parametric analysis, the parametric analysis. And uh, the second objective, which was linked to the previous one, was to identify the TTS characteristic. And so finally, the one we will talk about, the final objective was to identify the loading conditions. So this loading condition had to be identified at the ICU frame grouping areas, that is to say where the test strips were to be implemented. So in fact, the model we generated several cross-sections at which we could extract the loading. So here I give you an example of cross-section 8, 10 for one side, 9, 11 for the other side. And within the project, we put the main focus on cross-section 10 and 11 because they were located at the exact position of the red limits. So these loading conditions were to be uh, identified in terms of bending compression and shear compression ratio and during the initial phase of the fuselage uh, crash, that is to say, during the crushing of the subcargo. This slide shows the result of this analysis. The first result was that the crushing of the subcargo occurred during this time interval, which is shown in the following graph in red dotted line. So this graph is for bending compression ratio. These two curves are for, are for cross-section 10 and 11. And you can see that during the uh, a time interval of interest, these two ratios uh, evolve more or less constantly at a log level, at a ratio level of 150. Same graph, but this time for shear compression ratio, the same curves, around 1.4 uh, in shear compression. So, in terms of practical application, a way to generate this loading condition is to use uh, articulated rings in which the distance between the load application axis and the frame midline controls the, the loading conditions. We have two options, either fixed axis or laterally movable axis, which would permit to take into account the flexibility of the structure. Within the project, we decided to select the fixed axis configuration and to investigate the fixed axis configuration in future projects. We gave priority to the bending compression ratio, and so we dimension the rings with a distance of 150 between the application axis and the frame midline in order to reach the targeted building compression ratio of 150. So the third step was uh, the crash test that was conducted at the Bonera Drop Tower. So the general characteristics of this facility are shown here, notably a maximum impact velocity of 15 meters per second for maximum impact energy of 100 kilojoules. 
two main specificities to this system. First, the trolley guiding system that you can see in this picture, which is made of four vertical rails which are fixed on uh, mechanical jacks so that you can adjust the impact area, adjust the trolley mass, the trolley dimension in order to uh, uh, answer different crash scenarios. The second specificity concerns the test area, which is made of a metal table that you can see here, which is embedded into a concrete mass uh, that is suspended with damp springs in order to isolate the testing area from, from the rest of the laboratory. The crash test was so uh, performed at 22 feet per second initial velocity with a trolley weight of more than one ton for an impact energy of 24 kJ. Uh, the structure was test tested in uh, upside down position. We also had to implement a uh, residual energy uh, absorption system which was made of four metallic tubes that were along the, space the demonstrator. So you can see two of them in front face and two uh, in rear face. And the objective of this uh, system was to decelerate the trolley once the specimen was crushed over a targeted height, which was here fixed to 130. And it also permitted to prevent the destruction of the demonstrator uh, and it allowed a post-test inspection. inspection. because I think I should be too short. So it was about the instrumentation, but there is nothing specific to say about this. Okay, so this is a video of the test, so it's very quick. Front face, front viewing, and lateral viewing. So then you will see the next slide. Uh, so it was in real speed, the previous Video. Here in slow motion, it's two videos, front and rear videos from the high speed cameras. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the results uh, confirm the expected crash scenario with the bending of the car across beam, which is here, and the progressive crushing of the TTS components. When the trolley came into contact with the metallic absorbers, TTS components were crushed over 60 mm. So you have these pictures here that shows the post-test uh, photos of uh, the, the absorbers. Here it is in black the two rear absor absorbers and in white the two front absorbers. And at this stage, uh, almost 75% uh, of the impact energy was already absorbed by the structure. So, as conclusions, uh, in terms of numerical activities, we have developed and validated a modeling methodology uh, to identify the loading conditions that apply at different sections along the structure. In terms of experiment, we have developed and validated an innovative test setup with uh, articulated ribs, which permit to submit the structure to realistic loading conditions made of uh, a combination of force and moments. Uh, as I told you, the perspective would uh, mainly be to investigate the movable axis configuration, which would permit to get even closer to the actual loading conditions. And I would like to finish with some acknowledgements to the French Ministry of Defense, the FEDER and the Région Pas-de-Calais, who have uh, funded this activity. So I think it's now time for a question, and I will have some videos in the meantime. <coughs> Thank you very much.